Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hello. It's good to see you and have you here this morning with us. I want to read some scripture to you on this cloudy day. It's Psalms chapter 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. He is, it is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and in and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. It doesn't matter what has happened this week. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what's gone on this morning. We can worship together in spirit and in truth. I'd like you to stand with us and worship with us this morning. so grateful to be here in your presence this morning. We are thankful. We are thankful for your presence. We are thankful for your love. We are thankful for your grace. Your mercy never fails. 
So good. Thank you guys for worshiping with us this morning. We're going to do some announcements and then offering, and we'll hop right back into it. Good morning, everybody. Anybody else's alarm clock was the thunder? That was my kids' alarm clock this morning. It went, it was like, oh, one of them's going to come out screaming. They didn't, actually. They were quite brave about it. They, they woke up just fine. They were like, did you know it's thundering outside? No, I didn't know that. It's a surprise, so... Anyway, so good morning. Uh, I, I do. I love the rain, so I'm, I'm glad when it comes. Yep, that's her. That's, that's what she has to say about it. Anyways, uh, the a big thing that I want to announce this morning is it, uh, to make sure if you are one of the people that signed up for the, uh, the uh, Incredible Pizza outing, uh, we're going to be meeting there at Incredible Pizza at 520, Okay. Our seats are at 5.30, and it's going to take us 10 minutes probably to situate and get seated, all right? So make sure if you've, you've signed up, be there at 5.20, Incredible Pizza, all right? So I'll see you there. Um, but also, I want you to put something down in your calendar, all right? Are you ready? July the 14th, 15th, and 16th, we're having our big kids event at Lions Park once again this year. And so go ahead, put that in your calendars. And just, just as a save the date, Lions Park Kids Event, 14, 15th, and 16th of July. Uh, we're having our guest speakers from last year return. They were so incredible that I was like, y'all got to come back again. And so it's just going to be, it's going to be phenomenal. So I really want to encourage you to save that date. Kids, you are dismissed for Kids Church. Uh, don't forget to sign in. Uh, Miss Catherine will uh, sign you in up there. Right, Catherine? Yeah. And um, please be nice to Miss Sandy today. All right. Good morning, everyone. You ready to continue worshiping God? Amen? Amen. Uh, how many of you have been blessed? I mean, how many? Of, has God been good to y'all? Amen? God's been really good. Guess I should. Anyway, this, we're getting getting ready to take up for tithe and offering. There's several ways to do it. If you need a, a return receipt for your giving, there's envelopes in front. Just fill that out. 
You can do it online. You can do it by text. You can do it by the PAG app. There's offering buckets, two in front, one in back. So most of you, I want to say all of us have been blessed by God, right? He's good. He's a good God. Malachi chapter 3 Verse 6 says, for I am the Lord, I do not change. So if he's been good to you before, he's probably going to be good to us now, right? He's still going to be good. You know, I've heard this scripture a lot, taking up tithe and offering. And most people don't read it all, but I'm going to read it all. It says, therefore you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Yet from the days of your father, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you. I love some of these promises. He said, if you'll return to me, I'll return to you. Says the Lord of hosts, but you said, in what way shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offering. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open up for the windows, open up for you the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. So he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will cause you blessed for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. There's some awesome promises right there. Awesome promises. Everybody stand to your feet this morning. We're going to pray and we're going to bring the tithe and offering and then go back into worship. But when we get through praying as you're bringing your tithe and offering, let's give God a big clap, hand clap for the blessings that he's given us. Father, we thank you this morning that we are able to bring the tithe and offering into the storehouse. Thank you, God, for the promises. Thank you that you haven't changed you're still as good as you ever was. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever, Jesus. We thank you for that. And Lord, again, we just lift up the tithe and offering. We ask God that you would just bless it, that it would be multiplied. It would, Lord, it would just be more than enough. Lord, that we would be a church of more than enough. We'd have everything we need and even more so to do what you've called us to do. And Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing in our life in Jesus' name. Let's give him a hand clap. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord.
beautiful the way you turn any situation into an opportunity to honor you, into an opportunity to see you work, and an opportunity for us to just settle down and watch your power. watch your majesty to watch you move and I just can't leave this moment I just want to sing it to you one more time God I just want to sing it to you holy 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 I'm your child Thank you guys for worshiping. You may be seated. Jeff's going to bring us a good word. I can feel it in my bones. All right. All right. Um, grab your Bibles out. And if you forgot to bring yours today, if you don't have one, we have Bibles in the seats. So grab them. We're going to turn to the book of 1st Samuel. So 1st Samuel chapter 17. 17. So 1st Samuel chapter 17. I don't know if any of you all have noticed that pretty much the last two years of preach you, it's always been the Old Testament. I don't know why. It just it just happens like that. And so um anyways, man, on a side note, that that last song, Holy, 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 I love that song. It's one of uh when I first started going to youth, it was being played a lot at that point, and it really just takes me back. Uh that whole song, if if you ever get a moment, you should just like listen to that song and look up all the elements. That song has so much scripture just jam-packed into it. You can take one line and just spend spend quite a bit of time just going into the scripture of those lines. It's just a magnificent song, and it's just a absolute great way to uh, just start us uh, to end off of our worship today. And so, thank you, band members, for that. Um, I just, ooh, I just love it. I just love that. You know. When there's that that moment where they're changing keys, I was still singing because I'm like, I know all the words, I know all the words, and so, and anyways, anyways, okay, so chapter Samuel chapter 17, starting in verse 32, you know, I should I do this every time I get so excited to get up here and I don't bring my own Bible up here, so let me look it up real quick, and so, do 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 do, oh, it's all right. No, that's that's empty. That holds this actually, and so that's all right. So today we're going to be talking about one of the people, obviously of the Old Testament, that being David, King David, or not so much king yet. And so we're going to hit him up in his early years here. Thirty-two. Summit. Bear with me. Y'all are amazing. There it is. Finally got there. That's why I don't like using the digital. It takes me longer for some odd reason to look it up digitally than actually to flip open a Bible. 
And so, anyways, all right, so the account of King David, or before King David. So don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go fight him. Just in case you don't know what's happening, Goliath has come upon the Israelites. He's with the Philistines. They're looking to defeat him. And so Goliath is like their champion. So he goes down, and he starts insulting Israel, insulting God, and it's like, I'm going to take you all down. And David has now taken up the call to defeat uh, Goliath. So he says, don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I will go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy. He's been a man of war since his youth. He will eat you for breakfast. That's my transliteration right there. Uh, So forgive me. Uh, But David uh, persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears. I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over, and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such things before. I can't, I can't go in these, he protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took them off, off again. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them in his shepherd's bag. Then, uh, armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Goliath walked out towards David with a shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this ruddy-faced boy. Am I a dog? He roared at David. That they have, they, that you come at me with a stick? And he cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals. Goliath yelled. David replied to the Philistine, You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel's, of of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. As Goliath moved closer to the attack, David quickly ran out to meet him. Reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone, he hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in, and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from his sheath, and David used it to kill him. And cut off his head. So here we have, let me put this in perspective. This is like this is like ninth century BC, right? This is Bronze Age. You have David going out in this historical account to meet Goliath face to face in battle. One of the things that ancient armies loved to do, so not everyone had to die, was they would send out a champion. Hey, we'll send out one champion. You send out one, and maybe most of us can get out of here alive, okay? Let's just let one person die. So that's what they did. So they bring Goliath out. He's gleaming in armor. He is ready to do battle. He's tall. He's a giant. He's intimidating. And then you have David, who's this small, ready lad, comes out onto the field. It'd be like, it'd be like this, this, this small kid going out to meet the entire Dallas Cowboys team. Know what I mean? It'd be like, yeah, yeah, someone's going to get trampled here. Can, you, can someone get this boy off the field before we get sued, right? And so, but it, that's, that's this, this perspective. And so, in this moment, Goliath is feeling pretty insulted because he's like, I'm Goliath. Bring this child here to defeat me? Shh, this is horrible. Whatever. And so he he's, he's insults him. And so here we have, he, David is without armor. Okay, that's what I want to focus on today. The armor that David put to the side. Because the thing is, is you have to realize in this day and age, 
right? We're sort of used to militaries, they issue you stuff, right? If you join the, the United States militaries, they issue you stuff. They, they give it to you. They help you get prepared so you look like the rest of your comrades. They get you ready. Most uh, of the uh, modern armies nowadays, that's what they do. You have your uniform. You have your boots. You have a standard issue stuff. But in that day, when you were called up to do battle, you put on what you happen to have. They, weren't, they didn't issue that stuff to you. And so you had this army that was a hodgepodge of different armors. You had some that were fancy. Maybe they're well-to-do, right? Maybe they had nice some silver going on there with that bronze. Maybe they had a really cool sword. Maybe they had a sword and javelin. Whoa, now you're getting pricey here, right? Um, and then you have other people that were not so wealthy, and they would have these armor sets that were not so great. Maybe their great granddad wore it, sort of rusted on the side, and you're like, I just hope this stops something, right? And it doesn't fall apart as I go down the field. But you have David. He's in the king's throne room. He, he's with Saul, and Saul's like, you're never going to make this, so put on my armor, my armor, the king's armor. He didn't say, hey, David, go down to the blacksmith, and they'll just fit you up with something. No, he's like, hey, you're here. I want to give you my armor. The thing is, is an armor was a status symbol. It was a status. When you went onto a battlefield, the way your armor looked, the way it was, was a symbolism of your status in society, poor, rich, uh, and, and, and in between. It was your status. And so when David put on that armor, he was literally wearing the top stuff. He's wearing not anybody's armor, the king's armor. So uh, if David wore that armor and started walking on that battlefield, there's several things that was going to happen. One, everyone would have looked to David and automatically respected him. They would have automatically been like, oh, this is Saul's dude. I know that armor. This is King Saul's armor. That is amazing. And he would have automatically gotten respect. If, if Goliath saw him in that armor, he'd probably have been like, okay, you're small, but you have a king's armor on. You're cool. I like you. Let's fight. You know what I mean? Because I don't like you that much. And so the thing is, is when it came to the armor, David had put it off and decided that he wasn't going to use it. So that's what I, I want to dive into. Why not use it? First off, the armor, and whenever you're passed down something, it's a symbol, right? If you're passed down something in your family, it's like a symbol of continuance. It's a symbol of, hey, this was your great-granddad's. He did this. And it's like the symbolism of moving on with a family lineage. It's like moving on with that, 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 that past, the family. And the thing is, is with David, he's going to be king someday. Everyone else around him doesn't know that. But David knows that he's going to be king at some point. And so to wear that armor, honor, uh, armor was to symbolize that thing. So, but the thing is, is he is not going to be the same king as Saul, is he? No, he's not going to be the same. You see, the thing is, is Saul has already made some errors and mistakes, and he's just going to keep on making it until the Lord abandons him. He's like, you're, you're too far gone, dude. David was going to be a different kind of king. How much junk sometimes do we put on ourselves from our own choices, our own mistakes, our own history, our family past, stuff that, that's brought down to us that's not so pleasant, that's not so good? habits and, and, and personality traits that we're like, man, I need to get past this because I know, I know my parents or my parents' parents were like this, but I want to be different. I want to be better, you know? And it's so the thing is, is when David puts that off, it's like him symbolizing, I'm going to be different. I'm going to be a different kind of king because if he went on that battlefield, they would have related Saul to David, David to Saul. This is Saul's boy. He's going to have that armor. He represents everything Saul is and will be. It would be on him to do that. And the thing is, it's pretty hard to, to go through life with that burden on you, isn't it? It really is. You know, one of my favorites, favorite parts of this scripture is the fact that when Goliath was walking down to the field all gingerly like, David ran. He ran to the battle. He ran to it. It had been pretty hard to run with that armor on. And so the next thing I want to talk about is authority. David knew where, his, where the authority in his life came from, and that was from God. If he went out onto that field with that armor and he defeated Goliath, they would have been like, look at David. That's, that is Saul's dude. 
wow, Saul is good at choosing. Saul is amazing that he chose this lad to take him down. Saul would have gotten the credit. Saul would have gotten glory. But instead, David goes down, he's like, I am under God's authority. And that's the thing. There's a, there's a power of authorities going on in this battle. Goliath is like, I am the authority on my side. I am Goliath. I've been fighting you since before you were born. I've been fighting people since you were born, not just you, but I've been fighting people since before you were born. Look at my armor. Look at my status. My people honor me. My people bow before me because of my might. I am under the authority of my gods. My gods are going to destroy you. But so when David comes on the field, just as he is, he's giving glory to God in that very moment. Because the thing is, is he doesn't state, hey, I'm going to go and I'm going to kill you and I'm going to have a glorious day for, about it. No, what does he do? I am here because I am with God. I am a representative of God. I am, I am a part of his holy army. I, God is on my side. God is my authority. I don't, I don't need the respect of my, my people over here. I have God on my side. And so you have this, this battle of authorities. And the thing is, is who, whose authority are we under? I mean, we're always constantly under something. You know, parents, we got to respect our parents and, and everything. So authority is not bad. I'm not saying that. But in the end, God's influence in our life. That's what I'm talking about. God's influence in our life. Because before David even went out on this field, he already knew that God was with him and that he wanted to make sure that God had the glory. That's why even when he was stating to Saul his credentials, right, he was like, oh, I took down bears. I took it down lions. Did he state that and was like, hey, I'm great at taking down bears and lions? Did, is, that, is that all he said? No, of course not. He was like, God was with me as I took down those bears. I, God was with me as I took down those lions. God, that, the God that delivered me from the mouth of the lions is going to deliver us, Israel, from this Philistine. Even in that moment, when he was gloating about what he did, he wasn't really gloating. He was giving glory to God. And I just think that's an absolutely amazing. So whose authority are under and whose glory are we projecting? Our own or the glory of the Father. You know, Jesus talks about the light in the basket, right? That you, when you uh, put a light in the house, do you put it under the basket? But no, you, you take it off. You take the basket off the flame so the whole house can see the light, so they can see your good deeds and glorify God. It's the same thing. David wanted to make sure that God was going to be glorified, which is another example of how he's going to be different than Saul. While Saul glorified himself, David was going to make sure to glorify the Father. The next one I want to talk about is, are, was he ready? Because the thing is, is he already knows that he's going to be king. He knows he's going to be king someday, but he also knows himself well enough that he is not ready. He's not ready to be king yet. And the thing is, is how many times in our lives, and in your walk with Christ, may you're looking for a breakthrough. May you're looking for that breakthrough with your job or your family, or you're looking for that next step in your life, or that next, that next, that next adventure, but it's just not happening. What if it's because you are just not ready? What would have happened if David was just lifted up on, on the shield that day and proclaimed king of Israel? He was young. He was like 17 years old, 18 maybe. He's never seen war. He's never seen battle. He was not ready yet. He was not ready to be king yet. He was not king until he was 30. All right? He was, he was, uh, he was told he was going to be king at 15. It took 15 years between that and actually receiving the crown. But the thing is, is he had a lot of things to go through. He had, he had moments in his life that he had to go through to be ready, to be prepared. To be ready to go, to receive the kingship, and to be different than Saul. So what I'm trying to tell you is that be open to the Lord in his timing. David trusted in God's protection and his timing. Both of which, once again, Saul did not trust in. And so David in that moment, he had though what he needed. He had what he already needed to defeat Goliath. It's not like he went there one, that day and just, just trusted everything. No, the thing is, is God had already prepared him to fight Goliath, even though David didn't even know it. 
while he was out in his sheep, while he was out in the field, did he just sit there and make sure the sheep didn't run amok? No. He, he practiced music. He was a musician. He was a writer. He, he composed praises to God as he was watching the sheep. And, as he, and he, then he protected the sheep. He, he learned his sling. I don't know if you know this, but slingers, those ancient slingers, they were feared. They were absolutely feared because they could kill people in a single blow if they got the right shot. Because those, those slingers, they weren't, they weren't just a little boy down the alley with that slingshot that annoys you, right? He is, th- these people were experts, marksmen. They could, hit, they could hit anything from decent distances. And so the thing is, is David, he would have practiced. He, he had practice. He took that time instead of just, just being with the sheep and just making sure that they're okay he invested time in God. He, God invested time in him. And so by the time he got to Goliath, he had all the tools he needed. So the thing is, is today you have the tools for this present moment. But be open to God as he guides you into the next picture, the next chapter, or whatever in your life. Help him help you to prepare for the next thing. Because the thing is, is you have no idea where God is taking you. You know, we have these plans and these thoughts and, and our dreams. And God loves to accomplish those. But he's also not going to accomplish your dream if it's going to destroy you. He's for you, not against you. If David just went down on that field that day without spending that time with the Father, without growing deeper with the Father, without without composing that music, without just diving into him, without using that time wisely, he would not have been ready for Goliath and he would have died. So I really want to encourage you. He may not have had what he needed to be king yet, but he did have what it took to take down Goliath in that day. So prepare yourself. Dive deeper into the Father and see where he takes you. But the thing is, is he wasn't without armor. He wasn't. You know, in the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter 6, verses uh, 10 through 18, it talks about the armor of God, right? It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggles is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after uh, after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with, uh, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So the thing is, is David, he didn't need the armor. He knew he didn't need it. He, he, could, he tossed it aside. He was like, I don't need that. I don't need the king, earthly king's authority. I don't need his prestige. I, I, I don't need the, the, his past. I don't need to be like him. I want to be like somebody else. I want to be like my father. And the same thing goes with us. The deeper we dive in the father, the stronger that we are with the father. And as we dive deep, we get this armor. We get this armor of God that, that David had out on that field. So he didn't go armorless. He had God by his side. And the thing is, is that's all we really need. That's all we really need. Everyone bow your head and close your eyes. Father, thank you so much. And Miss Darcy, if you can come up and and I'll play. Father, thank you so much. You are amazing. You are absolutely amazing. We want to be under your authority. We want to be under your grace. We want to be under your spirit. We want to be under your magnificence. We live to be with you, to be like you, to grow to be like you. 
We live to worship you. We live to pursue you. We live just to be in your presence. And that's what David did. You know, Saul did not start out a bad character. He had a lot of promise, a lot of potential. He was strong. He was brave. He was courageous. He knew how to speak to a crowd. When God spoke through Samuel to him, he was like, I want you to be the prince of this land. I want you to be the prince of this land. I want you to guide my people. But unfortunately, that prince decided that he'd rather be king. Because where does the authority of the prince come from? But the father. Our authority on this earth comes from the father. When we hook our authority into his, that's where the changes in our life takes place. Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this wonderful congregation. They're just a magnificent group. But if you're here and you're like, God, I, I don't, I don't, I don't run my life through through you through your authority. I, 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 I need to do better. Because I know you know what you're doing, just like you knew what you knew what David was going to do. I, I know that you have the best for me. If that's you here today, no one's looking around. You can go ahead and raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, I just pray for those that raised their hand, Father God, and those that maybe that didn't raise their hands, but they're just they're just scared. Because that's a big deal, saying, I, I don't run under God's authority very well. That's it's a big deal. Father, I just pray that you will just be with each and every one of them, God. Help them to know who you are and to know that you love them. Because that is where that's the root of their authority, and it's through love. We, we, we follow you because of your love. We follow you because of your grace. Thank you so much. If you're in here and you're like, I, I am just jonesing for the next step in my life. I'm just jonesing for that, that something big in the future that's going to take me past my current hurts or pains or my current circumstances. I'm ready for it. But I, need, I, I, I want God to help me prepare for, those, for that moment. Because I, I, I trust him and I don't, want to, I, don't, I don't want to go down. If that's you here today, you can go ahead and raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Quite a few hands on that one. Thank you. And that's, that's, that's yeah. God has something for you, each and every one of you. Father, I just pray that you will help guide them into the training that they need. Guide them into the moments that's going to teach them how to how to survive once that next step comes. Teach them so they won't be destroyed in that next step. Teach them so they can flourish. Teach them so they will be ready. Thank you, Father, so very much. As we close this time with you, Father, I just thank you so much. You are magnificent. And I pray that you will just help uh, and guide us through our weeks and our, our months of life, that you'll be there every step of the way, just as you have promised. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Um, before you go, I want to tell you one last thing, okay? Do you have just a couple minutes here? Um, sometimes you're being trained when you don't realize it. I just wanted to let you know that. Um, that. I have a philosophy in my life that I picked up through some struggles, is that I plant myself where I'm at. That your current circumstances might not be the best. May you have that job that you just hate and you don't want. May you, there's, there's issues in your family that's just, just you're struggling with. You never know when you're being trained embrace it. Be like, God, train me for the next step. Because I can go through so many stories that would totally embarrass me of moments where I was like, this is horrible. I don't want to be going through this. But then after it's done, I'm like, if I didn't go through that, I would not have the strength for this moment now. So I want to encourage you with that. Grow where you are planted 
even if the soil does not is not tasting too good, and just trust that God will take you to the next step through those moments. All right. Anyways, uh, thank you all. Peace be with y'all, and uh, have a great day.